Well, Ellen and I started law school together in the fall of 1972. <laughs> there were a lot fewer women at the law school. Um, our class was maybe a third women, or maybe 30, I'm guessing, but roughly. The second year class had about 20. The third year class had about 10. And I was told that the class that had just graduated had three. There weren't, you know, there weren't that many women lawyers. I mean, that class of 75, you know, there were half a dozen or so um, women that graduated and stuck around in Lane County at that time. From the get-go, we, we didn't have her drafting motions for us, for the partners. We didn't have her doing research memo because we knew her work from the time when she was a law clerk. So Ellen uh, was given her own legal pad and her own pen and her own desk and some cases, and Ellen worked those cases very successfully. I think one of my first memories of working with her was when she was a Multnomah County judge. And I was uh, doing a career break and a volunteer court uh, tour guide for the Classroom Law Project. And so we would take students to visit uh, judges and, and learn about the judicial system and watch trials. And then Judge Rosenblum was always wonderful uh, working with the students, letting them learn about the judicial system. And she was one of the judges we identified as a, a great model for students to learn from. Lawyers liked having cases with Judge Rosenblum. Um, litigants, importantly, the litigants, Ellen, Ellen treated everybody in her courtroom as uh, an important person. And that was very important to her and it was very important to those people. I remember reading one of her opinions when she was on the Court of Appeals, which was of particular interest to me because it involved the same-sex couple and an artificial insemination and a child and then a custody dispute. And I read it a couple times because I really wanted to understand it. And I just thought it was just so well-written and so closely reasoned that I was, that, that was sort of when I went, wow, she's really got it. <laughs> Ellen has really made a difference uh, in Oregon, and I have been inspired by her in many ways uh, from her work as a judge. Uh, I know she's been very involved nationally with the American Bar Association, and having a, uh, a leader, a great leader like Ellen uh, in a national context has been inspiring. And then also uh, seeing her run for and be elected and serve as Oregon's first woman attorney general uh, has been very, very inspiring, not only for me, but for uh, many Oregonians uh, across the state. Ellen, as I said earlier, is an unbelievably warm person. And so she really connects with people in a lot of ways. And her family is, is everything to her. And I don't know anybody else who balances so much family, so much public service, so much hard work, so much juggling. And yet, if you're staying with her, she'll cook you breakfast. It means a lot to me because uh, the person who's the award's named after was a dear friend, professional friend and personal friend, John Jaquil. And uh, if John was alive today, he would call me up and tell me in very salty language, uh, this is a hell of a good choice. It really shows um, what a young person with a degree from the University of Oregon as an undergraduate and the law school um, can achieve for the public good. Um, she's. She's really the gold standard there.